lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim. Come on, everybody, give God a praise in the temple. Tonight we have a prayer. You know you need the word from the Lord. Lift your hands in his atmosphere and say, Lord, speak to me. Come on, fellowship, help me say, Lord, give us a word. Give us a word. in trouble, Lord, give us a word, our families are in trouble, Lord, give us a word, we surrender ourselves unto you, we say all we need, just one word, with the worship, everybody. Lift your hands and say, Lord, give us a word. Come on, let's sing. Give us a word. God, our lives are going to be better when you speak to us. Hallelujah. Our children are coming home when you speak to us. By now, come on, say all we need. Come on, say it. Say it till you believe it. Come on, just lean on them and say all we need. Just one word. This is what the Lord promised that you would. Things are getting better for you. Things are getting better for me. Somebody just wave back at me and say, I know that's right. I know that's right. You promised you would. You got it by now. You got it by now. Come on, lift your hands and say, all... One word. Just one word from you. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, things are getting better. Things are getting better. Things are getting better. Because all we need is just one word. Come on, stand up on your feet. I need about three more people to stand up on your feet and help me say, you promised you would. Come on, point up the heavens. A sign of victory and say you promised you would heal my land. Somebody singing it like you really believe it. Come on, say you promised you would. Look at your neighbor and say, I see things are getting better for you. Come on, say all I need is just one word. Just one word. Just one word. Doesn't matter what the doctor says. Doesn't matter what the lawyer says. But all I need is just one word. All I need. Just one word. Things are getting better for me. I feel them all in my Well, praise God. Let us remember that to ask the Lord today, let's ask him. We need a word, Father, from your heart to our hearts today. As we remember one word, 
Father, as we remember one word, one, one name that's above all other names, and that name is Jesus. We thank you for your son, Father. Be with us now as we open the book and talk about you. Well, thank you for being with us today. This is Changes, and I'm your host, Jim Hampton. Let's go back and start off by going back in time a little bit. For some of us, we'll have to go a little bit further than others. I'd like to reminisce and go back into my early years, way back when I was just a little kiddo. And I know my my parents and my grandparents, they liked to teach me things about the coming life that I would have. And, of course, we have to start in, in small steps, no matter what age we are, to learn how to live in this life. And they taught me how to, to be good. And they They prepared me or tried to for this world and the things that would happen across my life. They wanted me to be safe and and have a prosperous life. And my parents and my grandparents, they they tried to bring me up in the way that would please the Lord and to be someone that the Lord would be proud of. And And I pray, that's my prayer, that there's someone in your life that did that for you and that you're doing that for your children and your grandchildren as well. We have to all be prepared for a good life. You know, and that's what we're attempting to do with our our one grandson. We're trying to raise him in a good life. And God will bless a life that is dedicated to him. My my parents and grandparents started preparing me for this life at a very early age. And I can remember listening stories that they would read me when I was two, three, four, five years old. Nursery rhymes, you remember old nursery rhymes. I'm not sure what people do about books they read their children and grandkids these days, but back in my day, nursery rhymes were the thing of the day. They were written on a children's level for all of us kids to understand, and they were written with love. You know, they were taught us uh, good morals. They taught us how to get along with others and the basic truths of life and warnings of life. And they try to teach us those things in a nice, simple, uh, easy way that didn't frighten us at all. And and I think for the good part, they did a great job. I can remember them reading me out of a little book called Humpty Dumpty. Do you remember that story at all? Well, it taught us to be careful in this life. It taught us that things can break, and they can break beyond repair, to be careful and to value things. And then there was another book, Pinocchio, that taught us not to lie because there are consequences. Not only will your nose grow, but it will harm your life. It will harm people around you. And you can't hide lies for forever because they will start showing, and your nose will get longer. And then there was also Little Red Riding Hood that taught us there were some dangers in this world. And they taught us that in a very easy, nice way without frightening any of us. They taught us that things aren't always as they appear. And as adults, we grow up to realize that book was right. Things aren't always as they appear. There are wolves out there ready to devour us. And they're dressed to look very innocent. There are sheep and wolves' clothing, or wolves and sheep's clothing, whichever you want to look at it. And then there was the three little pigs. Now, there's a story. It was a story that if it was in the Bible, it would be a great story to teach our kids and our grandkids about these days. It, in fact, just for fun, let's let's talk a little about this story just a little while. This story taught us or taught me to build our houses and our lives out of material that's sturdy and long-lasting. You know, not not out of straws or sticks, but out of bricks. Make your house out of something strong like, like good moral character. That's what you could take from this story. If you don't remember the story, let me tell you briefly. It was three brother pigs decided to build a house, each one for themselves. One built his house out of straw one built his house out of sticks the last pig built his house out of bricks or stones well the wolf came to catch himself a pig and the wolf 
huffed and puffed and blew the house of straw right down. Well, the pig fled to his brother's house of sticks. The wolf huffed and puffed and blew the house of sticks right down. And the two pigs fled to their brother's house next door that was made of bricks and stone. The wolf again tried to blow it down by huffing and puffing, and he blew all he could, and he blew and blew until he was exhausted and blew in the face. But the little pigs were safely inside this little house of brick and stone. It was built of something that the wolf couldn't destroy. He couldn't get inside it. So let's examine this story of the three little pigs just a little bit from a scriptural point of view, shall we? The Bible teaches us that this world is a dangerous place. There is sin here. There is the devil here. And the wolf of this world is the devil. And he goes about to devour anybody he can. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Be sober and self-controlled. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, that's a good scripture. I've known that scripture for a long time, and that's one we should teach our children and tell them the importance of that. This world is not a friendly place, especially for us Christians. In this world, there are dangers of many kinds. There's temptations all around us to do wrong. And there are many traps and snares that we can all fall into if we don't keep Jesus as our guide in this life. We have to protect ourselves from these things and let God go before us to protect us from all these unseen troubles that are just around the corner. The best protection is to build our houses that we live in, our, our bodily houses, these temples of the Holy Spirit that we carry around with us, these temples that the Holy Spirit dwells in if we're a Christian. We have to make sure that these houses are built out of the right material, the strongest stuff available. And, and the strongest stuff available are the building blocks of faith and trust in Jesus Christ, our Savior, and in all the promises that he has given us in the Bible. Wouldn't you say that's the strongest thing we could find? Yes, it is. And if we try building our bodies as temple of the Holy Spirit out of greed or out of lust, or lies, or out of stealing, or any other sinful pursuit that we might have in this life. We, we will be weak, and we will not be able to stand whenever Satan huffs and puffs at us, or when he attacks us. If we allow anything but Jesus to attach itself to our, our temples, our bodies, then whenever the slightest temptation or, or storm of life attacks us, this body or this temple of the Holy Spirit, it will crumble and it will fall to sin. So we have to construct our lives and our bodies with nothing but the power of the Lord. We have to, to fortify our lives and our bodies and this temple with the power of Jesus Christ. There must be no other items, no other priorities holding our lives together, but but in Jesus, our Savior. You know, we can't just have a little faith. We can't just have a little belief in Jesus. We can't just do it a little bit. We have to do it thoroughly, 100%. It has to be number one in our lives. We can't just use Jesus, a little bit of Jesus, to cover over our bodies, our lives, our temples with some pretty sighting so we look good for all to see it's our insides that have to be pure have to be pure of intent those little pigs could have covered each one of their houses with pretty sighting the straw house could have had pretty sighting but it still wouldn't have stood against the huffing and puffing of that devouring wolf or devil and the same thing with the the house built of sticks, that little pig could have covered his house with pretty looking siding. But when the world and circumstances came, when the wolf huffed and puffed, it would have fallen down. So we have to build our house inside 
with strength from the Lord as well as build on a firm foundation. The Lord must be our first love, priority, and our goal in life. He must be our life's pursuit. And and if we must stay away, we must stay away from sinful ways as if our life depended on it. And it does. Our life depends on it. Without Jesus as our Savior, our eternity is lost to sin without Jesus in our lives. Without our constant guide being our Savior, without him being our driving force, we'll be defeated by sin. And and if sin takes us over, if it takes us over, even if we are Christians, we'll miss all the blessings that God has in store for us. Without Jesus as number one in our lives, our lives and our futures here on earth will be blown away, just like in that story of the three little pigs. Their houses were poorly built. We can build poor little houses, even on a firm foundation of Jesus Christ. It's what's inside our houses, what our houses are built of. That's the main ingredient in our lives. You see, if we aren't thoroughly committed to Jesus, if we aren't strongly built inside and out with Jesus, then the wolf, the devil, He'll be able to huff and puff and blow all our defenses away without Jesus as the main ingredient. If we let sin sin enter our lives once again, we've opened the door to that great deceiver, that wolf who prowls around like a roaring lion. And that great deceiver, the devil, he will promise us all kinds of great things that we can delight ourselves in if we allowed our sinful man to indulge in them. All those things that are temptations like wealth and fame and great possessions and a, and a great ego to, to feed our ego is one of the main things the devil delights in doing to us, especially us Christians. It comes about unexpectedly and it grows Slowly until we find ourselves prioritizing things in our Christian walk and in our ministry that we shouldn't do. God should be the main goal in our lives and our ministries. Teaching the Word should be our main goal, not growing and being famous. You know, what is it if we? gain everything here but lose all the blessings that God has in store for us. You know, what good are all those things that the devil and sin can bring you and I if we we aren't following the plans that God has so lovingly planned for you and I? He has a plan for your life. He has a plan for mine. And I can stifle that plan if I, the narrow road. There are so many plans and things that God wants us to achieve. And he has a list of doors that he's going to open for us. But if we get off the narrow path, those doors will never open. Those blessings will never be known by us. I don't want to ever not enjoy a blessing that God has for me. Don't let us miss out on God's plans. Don't miss out on God's blessings. And I don't want to stand before God someday and be read a list of all the blessings that I missed out on. Do you? I don't want to have to admit to the Lord someday that I failed him. Let's all work on that. Now, nursery rhymes are great for young children, but the Bible has stories and lessons for us adults too. Jesus went about the cities He walked on dusty roads and climbed hills and went through deserts to teach the people of the day and us through his word just how we're supposed to think and how we're supposed to live. We might add that he did all this out of a great love for us all. For us, the great sacrifice he died for our sin. On a low could understand it. He taught in parables and he talked simply because people weren't highly educated in those days. 
And the Sermon on the Mount is a great example. It was a great message. had had a lot of good messages inside of that sermon that he taught to the multitudes. And it was a great group of instructions to every believer when we read the Sermon on the Mount. I'd like to read just a little portion of that from Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. It's about building on a solid foundation. It says, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is, because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. Because when the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. That's just like our lives. There are folks out there who don't know Jesus, and they're building their lives on sand. They don't know about Jesus. They don't know about that great rock to be built on. That's our job to tell them about that great rock they can build their lives on. And then for us Christians, we can build on that rock, but the house we build can be very tenuous. It can be very easily blown over because it's not strongly built on Jesus. Rains come, there are testing, and there there are bad times, there are hard They threaten the walls of our houses. Sometimes these heavy storms of life can not only damage the walls of our houses, damage the walls of our spiritual houses and our relationship with the Lord, but they can start to destroy the very foundation of our house and our faith. When these storms hit us, we can begin to to back away from our faith. And even in some drastic storms, we can begin to, to doubt our Lord and our relationship with him. You know, on the other hand, when small storms and small trials and tests come into our lives, it's it's pretty easy to to weather these. It's easy to wait out storms. But there are times when a great testing comes. There are times in our lives when the problems and the storms of life are just too heavy and scary for us to hold out against them on our own. We often fight until we're we're worn out. We we pray and we fast. We we beg the Lord to rescue us. We use every kind of bit of faith that we have within us until we're totally exhausted. Sometimes the wolf of the devil has been in our door huffing and puffing. And in some cases, he's able to blow down our houses, our houses of faith that are that are made of straw and sticks because we haven't stayed close enough to the Lord. I can speak that from experience. That's something you almost always have to learn the hard way. You know, some of our houses might have looked good on the outside, but they weren't designed to withstand the really bad storms of life because the inside wasn't made primarily of God. It's human nature to build a house that looks good and and to stop there. Sometimes we get in a hurry to do other things except be with the Lord. Sometimes we get lazy. And we take the easy way out of life. We don't spend much time on our knees or in prayer to the Lord. And then we drift from the Lord. We put distance between us. But if we Christians are going to survive, what we build behind all that nice-looking siding is more important. We can't cover houses of stick and straw with brand new great looking siding that the world would approve of and and then think that we're okay because we're not it's what's inside that building that counts it's how the house is constructed inside that will hold us together during a storm of life we have to build a house of stone and bricks and faith on a foundation of rock the lord We have to build on the foundation of Jesus. 
You see, God will bless the house that is built on his rock foundation. God will also build a house that is built on his word on the inside. Our Lord will keep on, keep us from being blown away and from being defeated during the hardest of life's storms. If we hold on to him and nothing else, but we have to stay close to him and let nothing else come between us. In Luke 6, 47, it says, Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you who he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug and went deep and laid a foundation on the rock. When a flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it was built and founded on the rock. God is the rock, and God's telling us to follow his word. He isn't only talking about how we act. He's also talking about our character, what's inside of us. And the character of a Christian is like the inside of a, of a beautiful house. Every thought we have is like a piece of lumber in that house. Every intention, every desire, every spoken word is like a piece of that house, like a window or a door or an inner wall. Our character, how we really are inside, determines what the inside of our house is like. All of these parts of our character, if they're wrong, if they're not godly, if they're not intended you know, if they are intended for wrong or selfish or worldly games, if they're, if we are building a house out of ugly pieces, they together would build a grotesque-looking house on the inside. You know, it's simply covered on the outside with something beautiful, but what's inside is what counts. That's what God sees. Other people may not see it, but God sees everything. We can cover it all up with beautiful siding and the best-looking paint we can find. But only we can decide what our house is going to look like on the inside. We only sometimes work on the foundation, but those walls and construction of the inside have to be a work of art that only God can perform through his love and his Word, we have to allow him to construct this with his love and the changing of our character. We have to be constructed through and through in the image of God, don't we? We can't just be a facade that everybody sees. 1 Corinthians 3.10 says, According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. Take heed how he builds on that foundation. We have to be careful, don't we, how we build on our foundation, on God's foundation. If we don't build our personal house correctly, we will surely be swept away by the floods and the storms of life when they huff and puff at us. But when we build the right way, the correct way, we can stand solidly against any storm of life if we build our house correctly inside and out with the word of God. Then we can stand against any wolf or any devil or any problem, any fear, any doubt. So build your house inside and out so that even God, if he looks under the siding to see what's really there, that you won't be ashamed. And then and only then will we be safe from life. Will we be safe from this world? Will we be safely resting and living in the arms and the care of our loving Father? My hope today is that God will make all of us Christians into wise builders. May we all become master builders and carpenters as we build our house and as we depend on our great master to help us create what we really are inside. 
Until next time, this is Pastor Jim Hampton saying keep looking up and building for the Lord.